The pleasure is all ours, Mr. Brady. Please, call me Tom. <laughs> Can I call you Tom, too? Well, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 celebrities who played themselves on Family Guy. We now return to Brian Cranston Sneezes. <laughs> Thank you. For this list, we'll be exploring Seth MacFarlane's hit animated sitcom to find even more of the best guest stars to have lampooned themselves over the show's many seasons. Which of these guest stars is your favorite? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. Kiss Didn't see you come in! We're just getting into shape for our upcoming tour. After Peter finds out that his favorite band is coming to New England for a concert, he gets himself and Lois tickets, only to discover a harrowing truth. Lois doesn't actually like Kiss. This is a secret he learns when she bombs the lyrics to rock and roll all night. While it's not the first time Kiss appeared as themselves on the show, Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons use their voices hysterically in this episode. Rock and roll! Why don't, why don't you just sit in the corner, huh? Simmons especially brings in the laughs, hilariously brooding through the entire runtime, whether he's being disappointed at Freely's stupidity or losing faith in humanity after someone doesn't know the lyrics to his song. Oh man, I've lost all faith in mankind. Music is dead to me now. Number 19, Alyssa Milano. In one of the rare instances of using live action sequences on Family Guy, famed child actress and TV star Alyssa Milano appeared as herself, taking the brunt of a joke made at her expense. Since I became president, profits have been higher than Alyssa Milano. <laughs> What kind of cheap shot, Joel? I'm suing, I'm suing, I'm on it, I'm on it. In a hilarious cartoon meets real life scenario, an upset Milano orders her lawyer, ever present at a desk behind her couch, to sue the show's producers for their tasteless jab. This fourth wall breaking tactic functions as a perfect bit of pop culture commentary on celebrities' tendencies toward the dramatic, and in retrospect, also works as a parody of the times that Family Guy has actually been sued. Number 18. Alex Trebek Seth MacFarlane gave life to a suspicion that more than a few have surely had while watching Jeopardy when the late host Alex Trebek appeared on Family Guy as himself, kind of. Adam, what was your response? Kebert Zella. Ah! Insinuating that Trebek may be a being from the fifth dimension, he's quickly dispatched by contestant Adam West during Final Jeopardy. After the mayor of Quahog's answer, Kebert Zella, Alex Trebek spelled backwards, is said aloud, sending the unfortunate game show host back where he belongs. As outrageous as it sounds, the joke became meme-worthy in 2007, when a Jeopardy contestant gave a similar response on the air to test Mayor West's theory. Needless to say, it didn't work. So I will go back to another dimension <laughs> as soon as we deal with the other players. Have you have try. no money left. Number 17. Fred Savage Fred Savage once achieved worldwide fame for his role as Kevin Arnold in The Wonder Years, but he went in other directions following the show's end. Fred Savage! In the Family Guy universe, however, Savage has been acting on a whole other level throughout the years, with complex costumes as Michael Moore, Tony Danza, and Lars Ulrich. It's amazing how Savage can poke fun at his own less-than-it-used-to-be acting career, and the episode showcases a perfect blend of the pop culture commentary and outlandish humor that Family Guy is known for. I was hungry to do more acting, but the pickings were slim, so I came up with this scheme to satisfy my need to perform, and I guess it got a little out of hand. Number 16. Tony Sirico This next entry is less about Family Guy and more La Familia. What do you hear? What do you say? <laughs> The late Tony Sirico played fan-favorite character Polly Galtieri in HBO's The Sopranos, and like many characters in that show, he's got a bit of a temper. Now Chris, this is Brazil before the invention of the soccer ball. In the Family Guy episode, Stewie, Chris, and Brian's Excellent Adventure, Stewie makes a joke about various countries' origins and the stereotypical features that they've come to be known for. And Italy before pasta. Hey! Oh! Vowel sound! When he takes aim at Italians for making vowel sounds and being ridiculous, Sirico's Polly comes to their defense. Hey, family guy, you're lucky I got a manna gut in the oven. 
or I'd bash your face into a bolognese. If being one of Tony Soprano's henchmen wasn't intimidating enough already, Polly helps us visualize his anger using a couple of trademark dishes. That's two kinds of food. That's how angry I am. Number 15, Chevy Chase and Dan Aykroyd. Uh, well, Mr. Griffin, this has been uh, a lot of fun. A lot of fun. While their performances may have been straighter than you'd expect, it's simply amazing to see, or at least hear, these two SNL alums acting beside each other again. When the two actors mysteriously move into Cleveland's old house, Stewie and Brian become suspicious, eventually discovering that the two are spies hired by Ronald Reagan, who enlisted their help after watching Spies Like Us. So the long and the veiny of it is you're going to help us out, right? The situation is wacky enough, but the painfully straight way that Aykroyd and Chase play the situation makes it even funnier. For those of us who are nostalgic for 80s comedy, this reunion is a dream come true. The phrase is, gosh, that Italian family at the next table sure is quiet. You see, the U.S. government believes that one of these sleeper agents is right here in Quahog. Number 14, Betty White. An erotic novel being read by an elderly woman? This looks like a job for Betty White. Hired to perform the audiobook version of Peter Griffin's dirty novel, The Hot Chick Who Was Italian or Maybe Some Kind of Spanish, the multiple primetime Emmy Award winner and comedian extraordinaire put her unique brand of octogenarian charm to hilarious use in the episode Peter Rotica. Chapter 1 Oh God, you should have seen this one hot chick. She was totally Italian. Or maybe some kind of Spanish. <laughs> oh yeah. Far from a hot reading, the brief gag is made even funnier after the Golden Girl star's monotonous reading causes a deadly car accident. To top that off, White's apparent lack of knowledge of the audiobook made for even more laughs. Number 13, Carol Channing. And we're back with Fox Celebrity Boxing with Mike Tyson and Carol Channing. Carol Channing was one of the most prominent theater performers of all time. She was inducted into the American Theatre Hall of Fame, won a Golden Globe and a Tony, and received the prestigious Lifetime Achievement Tony Award. So it only makes sense that Family Guy portrays her as a badass boxer, right? Come here, young man, I'm gonna bop you one. Of course, it makes absolutely no sense, but that's why it's so funny. The fact that the Tony Award winning Channing was 84 years old at the time of recording an episode of Family Guy only proves how awesome and open she was as a performer. Up yours, young people! You and your rock and roll eight track tapes! Number 12, Jennifer Love Hewitt. Peter, this is our niece, Jennifer Love Hewitt. In a turn of events that would make some men jealous, Peter Griffin managed to score a hot date with actress Jennifer Love Hewitt in the episode Stuck Together, Torn Apart. Cast as a relative to the socially awkward Goldman family, Hewitt and the highly uncouth Peter are paired together after a trial separation between the Griffin parents. Full of gross-out gags, Peter's general ignorance and disgusting public behavior inexplicably turns the Ghost Whisperer star on. That's it. You have got to be the most vile, disgusting human being I've ever met. And I have never been more turned on in my life. Leading a jealous Lois Griffin to goad Hewitt into a banana cream pie catfight. Talk about a celebrity with a good sense of humor. Number 11, Hugh Hefner. Hey there, son. Mind if I have a seat? Who knew that Hugh Hefner liked to randomly walk around airports with his Playboy bunnies? After Quagmire drowns his sorrows at an airport bar, Hef randomly shows up, complete with his signature pipe, bathrobe, and sailor's cap. He then tells Quagmire a touching story about the actor John Holmes and his fondness for Quagmire's piloting abilities. Glenn Quagmire is the best damn pilot I've ever seen. The totally nonchalant way that Hefner plays this completely bogus and inappropriate story is truly hilarious. And it shows that Hefner was not just a businessman and a playboy, but a funny man as well. Excuse me, Hef. I got a plane to land. Number 10, Tom Brady. Thanks, Tom. I'm fond of your hair as well. I'm standing here with Tom Brady. Peter Griffin's obsession with the New England Patriots is well known to Family Guy fans. In Patriot Games, he got to live out his dream of playing for the team alongside legendary Pats quarterback Tom Brady, whose humble and sportsmanlike approach clashes heavily with Peter's classic obnoxiousness. Griffin, let's go! Let's go? <laughs> Things come to a head when the athlete is invited to a dinner from hell at the Griffin household, where he's objectified by pretty much every member of the family. Just a little spot, it'll come out. 
Well, that's not gonna come out. You better take a shower. Brady's appearance would later be complimented by fellow Patriots teammate Rob Gronkowski, who also appeared as himself on the 2017 episode Gronkowski's. We wanted to welcome you to the neighborhood. Awesome. Ah-ha! He spiked it! I was hoping he would do that! My eyes! Number 9. The Star Trek The Next Generation cast I did it! The cast of Star Trek The Next Generation is here to answer my questions! Patrick Stewart can be a really funny guy, but with the rest of the Star Trek The Next Generation cast, he's even funnier. This was the first time in seven years that the cast had all worked together. Actually, it was 19 for Denise Crosby, but either way, it was well worth the wait. But you're a baby! Yes, that's right, Denise Crosby. Stewie teleports them to his house to hang out with them, but they only end up annoying him by acting difficult and childish. I want some McNuggets. We'll get to you, Brent. I want a hamburger. No, a cheeseburger. This includes asking for silly items at McDonald's and refusing to pay $1.50 for bowling shoes. Now, why exactly can I not wear my loafers? What is the danger there? This isn't what anyone was expecting from a reunion, but we love it all the same. I have to pee again. That's it. Goodbye. <laughs> Number 8. Luke Perry Luke Perry made a huge splash in the early 90s, starring as the desirable bad boy Dylan McKay in the hit show Beverly Hills 90210. Yet in the Anything Goes tradition of Family Guy, Perry's caught off guard after a bogus piece of yellow journalism, published by Peter Griffin of course, outs the actor Meg Griffin? You are so sued. Regardless of fact versus fiction, Luke Perry plays along with every joke thrown his way from his tendency towards celebrity arrogance to his eventual secret fling with Mayor Adam West, making Perry a good sport and one of Family Guy's earliest guests to star as himself. Whoa, look, if you're gay, that's cool, but I am not. And even if I was, come on, I'm Luke Perry. I can get a much better gay guy than you. Number 7. Ryan Reynolds Hi there. Excuse me. I seem to be lost. Can you guys help me? When Ryan Reynolds shows up in Rhode Island to film a movie wherein he plays Hitler with a rockin' bod, Ryan immediately takes an interest in Peter and moves into Cleveland's house across the street. He then proceeds to act in a suggestive manner towards Peter, including mentioning his low-hanging pants and engaging in a tickle fight, all while desperately pleading for Peter to avoid his ticklish lower abdomen. It'd be the worst time for you to tickle my lower abdomen, because it's so exposed because I'm cheering. Yeah! Reynolds is always a good sport and this appearance shows how he always seems to be up for a laugh at his own expense. Whoa, freeze frame. What's gonna happen next? I think I gotta go to the bathroom. Number 6. Rush Limbaugh Controversial radio and television personality Rush Limbaugh appeared a few times on Family Guy, each time delving deeper into self-parody at his own expense. WTAT, Tatooine's All Talk Radio. My good friends, the liberal galactic media is at it again. They never stop! Over his multiple Family Guy appearances, Limbaugh poked fun at his controversial statements that led to his resignation from ESPN, his highly conservative political stance, and his alignment with Fox News. Of course, Seth MacFarlane pushes things even further when he adds in a potential relationship with Michael Moore, who is actually Fred Savage. But really, it's Limbaugh's good-natured ability to laugh at himself, seen again when he voices the Rancor, that lends to his credibility on the series. Rule number one, no tax dodging Jedis in my pit. Number five, Frank Sinatra Jr. Love is lovelier the second time around. Sinatra may not have been as funny as the other guest stars, but he made a mesmerizing impression nonetheless with his terrific voice and animated stage presence. But the thing that tops it all is when we swing. Sinatra made a few appearances throughout the show's run, singing many well-known songs with both Stewie and Brian, including Second Time Around and even some originals like At Frank Sinatra's Restaurant. The wine is red with lots of bread and portions are bigger than a horse's head. You'll burp up sausages tonight in bed at Frank Sinatra's restaurant. Family Guy is well known for its musical numbers, but having a legend's son as a guest star is even better. It fits with the show's penchant for 50s swing numbers and gave a fantastic performer a chance to shine, even if he was animated. Well, fellas, we gave it our best shot. If you need me, I'll be back in Palm Springs. Number 4. Bob Barker Former game show host and TV personality Bob Barker is not one to back down when invited to play himself in movies and television. He's done so three times on Family Guy alone. All right, Donnie, make sure the wheel goes all the way around. Always portraying himself as the face of The Price is Right, 
Barker often plays on his famous catchphrases from his tenure as a show host, but one of his most memorable appearances happened during the season seven episode, Tales of a Third Grade Nothing, in which Barker keeps his cool when speaking to Prince, who quietly mumbles everything he says. 350. I'm sorry? 350. Can you speak up, please? 350. All right, and the actual retail price of the dining room set is $350. Yay! Also of note is that Bob Barker's eventual replacement, Drew Carey, also appeared on Family Guy as the host of The Price is Right. Spin it, go ahead, Peter. Close as you can to a dollar without going over. Number three, James Woods. Hi, how are you? Hello, everyone. James Woods is no stranger to the world of Quahog. He's voiced himself for eight episodes throughout the show's run so far, and no matter what episode you choose, he is always hilarious. Ooh, piece of candy. Ooh, piece of candy. Ooh, piece of candy. Ooh, piece of candy. It's simply amazing that one of the show's breakout celebrity guests is someone so totally out of left field and such an unlikely fit with the show's target demographic. Hey, what's up, douchebags? I'm here to audition for this stupid pilot. Crotchety though he may seem, he's clearly a good sport about whatever situation he's put in. Whether he's following a trail of Reese's Pieces like E.T. or being resurrected via a 17-year-old woman's life force. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna check back into my hotel. Oh, screw that. You'll stay with me right here. Come on, we'll have a camp out in the yard. Wicked cool. Number two, Liam Neeson. I will find you. And I will kill you. Leave it to Family Guy to ask the question, is Liam Neeson a fake tough guy? Such were the stakes in the season 13 episode Fighting Irish, when the well-known Irish actor traveled to Quahog to shoot a film about a vengeance-crazed Albert Einstein. I hear you've been all over town saying you could kick my arse. Well, there's no time like the present. Accepting jabs about both his newfound fame as an action star, as well as the heartfelt roles that have defined his career, Neeson channels his more typecast parts from movies like the Taken series, grunting out his lines like Brian Mills. Go to the gym, kneel down in the shower, and ask strange men to pee in your cupped hands. Neeson is hilarious and seemingly let the writing room's imagination run wild. His obsession with having Peter collect other people's urine certainly made for some interesting plot development. Hey man, did Liam Neeson send you? <laughs> yeah, he loves them little cars. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Adam West. Prepare to meet your maker at the hands of my cat launcher. The late Adam West was once known only as Batman, but he made his mark in the new millennium with Family Guy by voicing a bizarro version of himself and completely revitalized his career in the process. <laughs> In the show's world, he's the bumbling mayor of Quahog, and every scene he's in is bound to be one filled with happiness and laughter. Well, time to put on my spaghetti hat. West had no barrier regarding the things he would say, including showing up in a random sequence with Rob Lowe, making him not only the best Family Guy celebrity star, but also one of the show's very best characters, period. We're big Hollywood actors. <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.